Yvonne and I came to town some 18 years ago and we've both been involved in various clubs and organisations over the years. And one thing that stood out was that each club or organisation did their own leaflets, flyers or uh, leaflet drops, uh, to, to newsletters, etc. Uh, all at a considerable cost. And I suppose the, the big problem with that is that they were only getting the information out to their own members, let's say the soccer club, the rugby club, the GA club, effectively it was going to their own members. If it came out from the schools, it was only going to the parents of, of the kids that were in the various schools. And, and on top of that, there was no framework to recognise a lot of voluntary work that was going on in the community and recognise achievements and, and uh, I suppose, various uh, events that, that, that happened locally. Um, and it, it would have been then when, we, when you could go out for a drink over the Christmas in 2010, myself and Colin and Brendan were having a chat we, we talked about this short, this gap that we saw in the community and it was from that, at that time the seeds were sown for a in a slow life. Um, uh, then, I suppose around about that time I had just become chairman of the Balanced Area Community Development Company and it was seen as, as an ideal vehicle under which we could run the magazine because as an organisation we represent everything that happens in sporting, socially, business-wise, heritage, culturally-wise and we felt BSCD was the ideal vehicle to promote the magazine through. So with that in mind, while we were aware that there were pitfalls along the way, people had tried this in the past, it lasted for a certain length of time but faded away. But come March 2011, the first edition uh, of Balanced Slow Life was launched and now 10 years later after 60 editions we're um, stronger and better than we ever were. So let's look forward now to the next 10. Thank you. So since the magazine started to date we've almost had 170 different businesses who have advertised with the magazine so it's a massive thanks to each and every business because without the businesses just the magazine is impossible. So out of that 170 businesses each time we have approximately between 60 and 70 businesses who advertise in every magazine so in other words they sign up for the year but each magazine as it comes out more businesses are contacting us for advertising so look it's just going to show the strength that the magazine has gone to we're also always looking for new um, new businesses to advertise with us we do editorial features on different businesses as well so look we see the magazine as a way for the local businesses to be able to get the word out directly to the door of their local market so how we do the delivery is thanks to, we have, I have a pool of nearly 30 voluntary drivers at the minute who all give up between two and three hours um, on the last Friday um, every two months. And then usually with the help of the TY students from Garbley as well, it means we're able to get the magazines, nearly 4,000 magazines delivered to every door inside the speed limits of the town. Um, and then also a massive thank you has to go to Ken Kelly who delivers all the magazines to the hinterland so he delivers them to all the local shops and schools as well so we find that's a great way of getting the magazine out to the local hinterland as well. So yeah edition number 60 it's hard to believe that it's 10 years ago um, when this all began but without question it's grown from strength to strength obviously at the start we had to approach businesses to ask them to advertise in the magazine and support it but now it's come full circle and we're finding that all the businesses are coming to us looking to advertise their their business and to let people know what they're doing. Firstly I'd like to say that we are delighted in KPW me personally to be involved as the founder member in the, in the production of this magazine. I think it's a quality magazine and to that end I need to thank the staff in KBW, most of which have worked in this magazine over the years. We've had six graphic designers at different stages in the, in the, in the design of the magazine and the front cover in particular I must pay, pay big attention to um, Robbie Riddle who's done a great job over the 60 issues in producing high quality photographs. Robbie is an award winning and photographer and we're delighted to have him here. To the founding members and the founding subscribers I want to say a big thank you. Well I suppose Colm the best way I could describe it is like the old saying it's like a letter from home for uh, people who have immigrated all over all over Ireland, England, America and things like that. And I'm amazed by its popularity, but I think it's uh, it's because of the content with a mixture of history, 
local news, personalities, and uh, people like to contribute to it, and they like, they're proud of the town. This is a great town, it's a great history, and uh, a lot of it has not been exposed. But in recent issues, there's been more uh, stories told about old people, old buildings, and history. And this has um, evoked an awful lot of interest. Well, I mean, basically, I do East Galway, starting in Ahaskra, um, on to Caltra, Kilconnell, Kiltormer, uh, um, right up into Ockram, Capitagal Airport, Kilimer, Clarenstown, that area. On top of that, I post out about 12 copies every month to people in Dublin, uh, Kerry, Clare, Mayo, that ask me for copies to send friends of mine. And on top of that, um, I always have some in the car and I do regular deliveries down Kildare, Dublin hotels I dropped them into. And it's amazing, even waiting rooms and hospitals, people love to pick up and read to it. And uh, the reaction has been, you know, I get phone calls afterwards about this, that and the other. I've got uh, contacts from Mexico, with, uh, Canada, uh, California. And uh, one particular story sticks out about an article I did there a couple of months ago about a drowning in 1920 of a young man from Ballyhall, at 17 years of age, that lost his life in the river So, Well, inside of 48 hours of Ballyhall's slow life going up on line, I had a text from his nephew in Dublin who said he had been contacted by a Ballyhall's slow man, Damien McCullough, in Greece and sent a copy of the article and he had been trying to ascertain the background to his uncle's tragedy and he wanted to thank me for it. And I thought, once you can help somebody like that along the line, this is part and parcel of what has made Ballon Slow Life so successful. On top of that, there were, there were uh, many great people in Ballon Slow that we wait until they're dead to write obituaries about them. I think when they're living, their deeds should be acknowledged as well. And yeah, we'll get through several people, we hope, in the coming issues to acknowledge what they have done for the town, for their families and for themselves. So this is a memorable occasion for me, uh, and it was even more memorable uh, editing the 60th edition of Band of Soul Life. Um, it was like watching 10 years of one's life bob by in a photograph and printed word. Um, while a lot of people think the magazine is down to the, 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 the four project uh, member team, Brendan, Seamus, Colm, Lynn and indeed Paul Hardin at the start, um, unfortunately there's no, there's no one of us uh, alone that can deliver this type of project of this uh, magnitude and complexity and really I've been very very lucky and so have our readers been very very lucky in the way that certain contributors and a number of wonderful people have given up the, so freely of their talents in writing and in research uh, to compile the magazine every two months and they are in no particular order Mr Kenneth Kelly uh, of this parish um, he is uh, a family member of the Kelly's Print family, uh, but a distinguished journalist and NUJ member in his own right, retired now, who writes voraciously about a variety of topics and helps the magazine with distribution and other matters. Barry Lally, who was the Dean of the uh, Heritage and History um, Faculty in our magazine, and he's ably better by Damien McConnell from uh, Corinth, uh, late of Society Street, uh, Sean Tully, um, uh, Sean Tully, uh, uh, Elaine Evelyn Donlan, uh, Jerry Devlin, and a uh, host, a galaxy of other uh, people who, Pat Johnston in the early days was very kind to us as well as a, as a million copy. Uh, we've been very lucky uh, and they have contributed copy on a regular basis and it's always sought after and keenly commented upon. 
And of course, my job and the job that an editor does is made much easier by the fact that we have been nobly served by a, a 19 trainee reporters. And you see them flouncing around town behind their, the lens or with their notepad in hand. Uh, we've got a, the lion's share of them for the of my old alma mater, where I studied uh, a long time ago. And um, we've had others from GMIT and indeed NUIG down through the, the years and they've been supported by a host of other trainees from a variety of Da Vinci and Erasmus programmes from Europe which we're very indebted to be nominated as a training employer for. Um, and of course all the different public relations officers and communications officers of different clubs, sporting, cultural, community, um, without their, and charitable, without their involvement and engagement with me and with the reporters in the magazine and our online uh, uh, portal, it would not be possible to bring regularly to all of us in Bandleslow, both those who live here and those who have left here, a little snapshot and update on how truly wonderful and good this community is, not has, is. Here's to the next 10 editions. Thank you.